anti herpes virus agents so in the previous presentation we talked about antiviral agents in general their mechanism of action and the different types of viruses in this presentation we shall discuss about anti herpes virus agents in detail first let's take a look at the herpes virus and its variants of the more than 100 known herpes viruses eight routinely infect only humans which can be further divided into three groups the alpha herpes viruses which include herpes simplex virus type 1 which typically causes diseases of the mouth face skin esophagus or brain herpes simplex virus type 2 usually causes infections of the genitals rectum skin hands or meninges both cause serious infections in neonates and varicella zoster virus which causes varicella and zoster these group the alpha herpes virinae they are characterized by a short replicative cycle induce cytopathology in monolayer cell cultures and have a broad host range they are the neurotropic variant viruses the other two groups which are the beta herpes virinae and the gamma herpes virinae belong to the lymphotropic group the beta group includes cytomegalovirus, human herpes virus 6 and 7. They have a long replicative cycle and restricted host range. And the third group, which is also a lymphotropic virus, which is the gamma herpes virinae. They are Epstein-Barr virus and human herpes virus 8 with a very restricted host range. On the right side here, you can see the diagram of a herpes virus. The outer layer is the lipid bilayer envelope, beneath which is the tegument. Enclosed inside is the nucleocapsid with DNA. And on the surface, there are glycoprotein spikes. Now, in the previous presentation, we discussed about the viral genes of herpes virus, such as the immediate early, early and the late phases genes. Another important property of herpes virus is that they have the ability to establish latent infections. So here you can see an example. The primary infection of herpes simplex causes gingival stomatitis and mild pharyngitis fever. Varicella causes chicken pox. The virus then transit up the peripheral nerve and reaches the sensory neuron in dorsal root ganglion in the spinal cord. Upon activation of the virus in the neuron due to stress, the virus transit down peripheral nerve and it can cause recurrence such as herpes zoster or shingles and cold sore. So the first drug that we are going to talk about is acyclovir. Chemically, acyclovir is an acyclic guanine nucleoside analog that lacks a 3 dash hydroxyl on the side chain. Valacyclovir is the l valyl ester prodrug of acyclovir. Acyclovir is seen as a new age in antiviral therapy. Gertrude Ilion, its creator, was given the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1988. And it is a widely used antiviral with main implications in the treatment of herpes. Acyclovir's clinically useful antiviral spectrum is limited to herpes viruses. In vitro, acyclovir is most active against HSV1, approximately half as active against HSV2, a tenth as potent against varicella zoster and Epstein-Barr virus, and least active against cytomegalovirus and human herpes virus 6. Talking about the mechanism of action of acyclovir, it is able to exert its action because of its structural similarity to deoxyguanosine. That is the structural part which you can see here on the screen. This part of the structure of acyclovir is similar to the structure of deoxyguanosine. This part mimics the structure of deoxyguanosine. So under normal conditions, enzyme thymidine kinase combines phosphates with nucleoside such as deoxyguanosine and converts it into its nucleotide form that is guanine nucleotide which is then incorporated into the DNA via DNA polymerase. Now in the case of acyclovir 
Its cellular uptake and initial phosphorylation are facilitated by HSV thymidine kinase. The affinity of acyclovir for HSV thymidine kinase is about 200 times greater than for the mammalian enzyme. Cellular enzymes convert the monophosphate to acyclovir triphosphate. Acyclovir triphosphate competitively inhibits viral DNA polymerases and to a much smaller extent cellular DNA polymerases. Acyclovir triphosphate it is then incorporated into viral DNA where it acts as a chain terminator because of the lack of a 3-hydroxyl group. So by a mechanism termed as suicide inactivation, the terminated DNA template containing acyclovir binds the viral DNA polymerase and leads to its irreversible inactivation. Acyclovir resistance in varicella zoster isolates is caused by mutations in varicella zoster thymidine kinase and less often by mutations in viral DNA polymerases. Now let's look at some acyclovir substitutes. Valacyclovir, Famcyclovir and Gancyclovir. Valcyclovir is an Easter prodrug of acyclovir. It has an improved oral bioavailability and it is the drug of choice in herpes zoster infections. It is generally available as an oral preparation. Famcyclovir is the Easter prodrug of pencyclovir with prolonged antiviral effects and it is used as an alternative in HSV and VZV. Famcyclovir is available as oral preparation whereas pencyclovir is available as a topical agent. Gancyclovir is the analog of acyclovir. Its mechanism of action is via monophosphorylation for which it requires UL97 gene. It is used in, in case of severe CMV infections in immunocompromised patients. Gancyclovir is available as an oral preparation, intravenous preparation and also as an intravitreal preparation. The next anti-herpes agent is cytofovir. Chemically, it is a cytidine nucleotide analog with inhibitory activity against human herpes, papilloma, polyoma, pox and adenoviruses. It is the first nucleotide analog to be approved for clinical use. Talking about its mechanism of action. So once inside the cell, cytofovir needs to be activated by cellular enzymes. After undergoing cellular phosphorylation to its diphosphate form, it competitively inhibits the incorporation of deoxycytidine triphosphate into viral DNA by viral DNA polymerase. Incorporation of the drug disrupts further chain elongation. Now, unlike nucleoside analogs such as acyclovir, which we talked about to gancyclovir, cytofovir is not phosphorylated, hence activated by a viral kinase. So, in case of acyclovir, both cellular kinase and viral kinase were involved, whereas in case of cytofovir, it is done by only cellular kinase. Cytofovir resistance in CMV is due to mutations in the viral DNA polymerase. Low level resistance to cytofovir develops in up to eight in up to thirty percent of retinitis patients by three months of therapy. And it has been employed almost exclusively to treat cytomegalovirus retinitis in patients with the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. However, it is also used as a therapeutic option against other viral infections. Concomitant oral propanacid and saline poor hydration reduce the risk of renal toxicity as nephrotoxicity is the principal dose limiting side effects of intravenous cytofovir. Now next moving on to phoscarnate. So chemically phoscarnate that is trisodium phosphonoformate is an inorganic pyrophosphate analog that is inhibitory for all herpes viruses and HIV. Now, an important aspect of phoscarnate is that it inhibits viral nucleic acid irrespective of the type of nucleic acid. That is, it is unrelated to any nucleic acid. It can act on both DNA and RNA. Its mechanism of action is 
It is taken up slowly by cells and does not undergo significant intracellular metabolism. It reversibly blocks the pyrophosphate binding site of the viral polymerase in a non-competitive manner and inhibits cleavage of pyrophosphate from deoxynucleotide triphosphates. So deoxynucleotide triphosphate are the building blocks of DNA. They lose two of the phosphate groups when incorporated into DNA during replication. In case of phoscarnate, it inhibits this stage. So deoxynucleotide triphosphate is not incorporated into the DNA. This step is blocked. It does so by binding reversibly to it and hence it inhibits DNA chain elongation. Intravenous phoscarnate is effective for treatment of CMV retinitis including gancyclovir resistant infections, other types of CMV, CMV infection and acyclovir resistant HSV and VZV infections. Next moving on to fomiversin which is a 21 base phosphorothioate oligonucleotide and is the first FDA approved antisense therapy for viral infections. So what is antisense therapy? It is a tool that is used for the inhibition of gene expression. The principle behind it is that an antisense nucleic acid sequence base pairs with its complementary sense RNA strand and prevents it from being translated into a protein. And this form of therapy is used for the treatment of genetic disorders or infections. So fomiversin is complementary to the messenger RNA sequence for the major immediate early transcription regional transcriptional region of CMV and it inhibits CMV replication through sequence specific and non-specific mechanisms including inhibition of virus binding to cells. Fomiversin is given by intravitreal injection in the treatment of CMV retinitis for patients intolerant of or unresponsive to other therapies. Now, two other drugs that we shall discuss is idoxuridine and trifluoridine. So both are thymidine analog. Idoxuridine is the iodinated form and trifluoridine is the fluorinated form as the name suggests. The mechanism of action of both is interrelated. That is, upon activation, both the drugs are converted to their triphosphate form which inhibits viral DNA synthesis and is incorporated into both viral and cellular DNA. Such altered DNA is more susceptible to breakage and also leads to faulty transcription. The primary use of idoxuridine is in HSV keratitis, whereas trifluoridine is used for the treatment of primary keratoconjunctivitis and recurrent epithelial keratitis. So let's just recap the drug of choice in the specific herpes infection. In case of genital herpes, acyclovir is the drug of choice and foscarnate can be used as an alternative. In keratitis conjunctivitis, trifluoridine is the drug of choice. In encephalitis, neonatal HSV infection, herpes and varicella zoster in immunocompromised patients, acyclovir is the drug of choice, whereas in CMV retinitis, gancyclovir is the drug of choice. So this was about anti-herpes virus agents, the various drugs and their mechanism of action. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.